Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy Medicine event. I'm very excited to see you. We have very exciting things to talk about. Um, this is the important slide that says the names of the people that I won't mention. And I thank the organizers, the sponsors, the presenters, and you for coming. And here are our speakers this morning. I'm the first speaker. My name is Jim Oshman. And Wayne Miller is going to be second, Dr. Sinatra, then Dr. Wolf Dieter Kessler, Dr. Dawson Church, Dr. Carolyn Matzinger, Dr. Peter Holick, and then Dr. Kessler is going to come back in the afternoon and give you a demonstration of some very interesting technology. So this is the eye opener to get your eyes open, give you some physics to run your metabolism by. And it's about the energetic aspects of aging. And this is the schedule, and here we are. I'm going to talk about biomagnetics and magnetobiology. These are topics from physics. Many physicians are not uh, familiar with physics. It's not part of medical education. Someday it will be because the energy medicine technologies that are coming along require a little bit of understanding of basic physics so that you can communicate with your patients who are amazed and say, how did you do that? A little bit of language of physics helps. So I'll talk about Ampere's law, Faraday's law, and antenna theory, which may sound very boring, but it's a very interesting subject. Biomagnetics, the study of the magnetic fields surrounding the body, produced by metabolism, um, and meet magnetobiology, the study of the effects of magnetic fields on living organisms. And after a lot of controversy and confusion, we know, now know a lot about how living systems generate biomagnetic fields. We also have a variety of technologies that introduce magnetic fields into the body that have proven to be safe and effective for a variety of medical, medical conditions. Uh, the example I give here is the use of pulsing magnetic fields for stimulation of bone repair. Uh, one of the first to be approved by the FDA, but now many uh, frequencies and many magnetic interactions have been uh, tested and are being made available. So there are two laws of physics. If you know these laws of physics, a lot of things make sense. Ampere's law, this began in 1820 when Hans Christian Ersted, physics professor in Copenhagen, was giving a demonstration in a physics class, and he had some magnets and some wires and some batteries, and he noticed that when a current passed through a wire, the compass needles moved. This was a historic moment in the history of physics. Electricity can give rise to magnetism. And this is now a basic law of physics called Ampere's law. And these laws of physics are pretty much engraved in stone. They have never been violated. They have been tested over and over again. We know a lot about them. And in this instance, you see on the left a bunch of compass needles pointing towards the North Pole and when a current passes through the wire, which is coming out toward you, uh, electrical engineers learn the right-hand rule. You point your finger in the direction of the current flow, and your fingers wrap around to show that the direction, the direction that the magnetic fields orient in, and shown here with the compass needles. Ampere's law. The second important law is Faraday's law, which a few years after Orsted's classic ex experiment and discovery uh, found that the opposite is true. Moving a magnet near a conductor. Ampere's law has to do with charge moving through a conductor, and this is moving a magnet near a conductor induces a measurable current in the wire. Magnetism gives rise to electricity. Faraday's law of induction is another fundamental law of electromagnetism and is 
again been tested for a very long time and it always works. So remember these two laws, Ampere's law, Faraday's law, because they'll help you understand things like this, the use of pulsing magnetic fields, uh, Ampere's law, electricity flowing through a coil will generate a magnetic field, and this is the bone stimulation device, and the magnetic field in turn will induce a current flow, in this case through the fracture site in the bone. Electricity gives rise to magnetism. Magnetism gives rise to electric currents. And by the way, um, the way to make strong magnetic fields is to pass the current through a coil. So energy medicine, there are a variety of hands-on and hands-off methods that are increasingly popular. The public likes these techniques. They can often resolve issues that are medically challenging uh, with the, in a very short time. And a, there are also a variety of devices that are extremely valuable therapeutically that in, introduce electric currents or uh, induce current flow or introduce light into the body. And what I'm fascinated with is how do these things work? I am not the person to ask of whether it works or not. I'm not a proof of efficacy person. I am a how does it work. Uh, and, and it's important to know how it works because often clinical trials that show that something works, people can't believe it if they don't have some mechanism to go with it. So I'm the how does it work guy. And I define energy medicine. It's the diagnostic and therapeutic use of energy. And these are not mystical New Age energies, they're the basic energies of the universe that you use with your senses to orient yourself in space. Heat, light, sound, gravity, pressure, vibration, electricity, magnetism, chemical energy, electromagnetism. And all of these forms of energy are produced by the human body and they can be detected by medical devices or by the human body using our senses. And energy medicine recognizes that we use these different forms of energy uh, for specific purposes, including communications that are involved in physiological regulation. So regulation becomes a very interesting subject for energy medicine, and defects of regulation uh, bring many patients to you. Energy medicine involves energy of particular frequencies, intensities, wave shapes, and other characteristics that stimulate the repair of one or more tissues in the body, open up lines of communication, and so on. And these energies, when delivered appropriately, preferably at very low intensity because the body is very sensitive and listens to very low levels of stimulation, uh, Wonderful things can happen. Molecular resonance and antenna theory. This is the third uh, physical area I want to tell you about. It sounds like a boring, dry subject, but understanding how antennas radiate and absorb signals is central to understanding regulatory biology. And all of the hormones and all of the regulatory molecules in the human body have their activity by interacting with receptors on surfaces of cells, and those interactions can be molecule-to-molecule -molecule interactions, and they can be, through the electromagnetic field, molecules do not have to touch each other to interact. 